What's going on, people? You're back with Phoenix, did it? Uh, you're going to see some games going on in the background and stuff. Don't worry about none of that stuff. We'll cut all the sound and all that crap out later. The kiddo's in the back playing. He's having some fun. We're not cutting out nothing. We ain't cutting nothing. You're getting all of it. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, as I've mentioned previously before in other videos, when we've done our snacks and stuff like that, I am a chef. Um, I like to do my own little creations and stuff at home. So today, I'm going to do a blood and honey gravy over top of some pork chops, which I saw earlier. Okay, we're going to do that with some red potatoes. And we're going to throw some really good veg in there. Now the veg that I have today is garlic, onion, and carrots. And I've also got some herbs and spices, some simple salt and pepper. It's really all you need. Um, we're going to throw a little bit of fruit in there, which would be our tomato. And yes, for all you people out there who are going to, I know they're going to say something. That a tomato. Tomatoes are tomato. fruit. Okay. Take from the chef. That's like when people say, I'm vegan. Okay. What kind of vegan are you? I don't eat meat or, or, or deal with dairy or eggs. Oh, so you're a vegetarian. Anyway, that's a whole nother rant for a whole nother time. <laughs> that, that's a hot button for me. That's a <laughs> hot button issue for me. Um, our, our herbs that we have today. Simple. A little bit of basil, a little bit of thyme, a little bit of rosemary. Okay? Simple he sounded stuff. like Austin Powers. Basil. <laughs> it's the proper way to pronounce it. <laughs> Ask anybody that's British. We use the Queen's English in this house. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> so basically what we're going to do is you've already seen the potatoes are on a roasting pan. I've already got those on the pan. You got to spread them out nice and even make sure they're broken apart. Okay? Um, I just went ahead and kind of quartered them. Just did a simple little cross slice on them, quartered them up real good. Um, what did you spray on there? Uh, just some cooking spray for now. Um, if you don't have cooking spray or if you don't feel like using cooking spray, just some butter, kind of melt it in your hands, get it nice and, you know, in your hands and everything and just kind of spread it around. Make sure that your pan is well greased, well buttered, however you want to do it. If you want to do oil, you can do regular oil. You can do canola, vegetable, peanut oil if you want. That'll add a little bit of flavor there. Um, you can do extra virgin olive oil. You can do coconut oil if you're trying to be a little bit healthier about it. Um, just keep in mind you have to be careful with coconut anything because coconut, when you have a lot of it, can cause diarrhea. Okay. <laughs> it is, it is very much so. A laxative. A laxative. It is very much. A gastrointestinal like lubricant basically um it's just like with k-row syrup you know back in the day your grandma they used to be like hey little k-row syrup you be like right. yeah. no you want the toilet yeah, yeah okay so what we're gonna do um in this i've got so i've got a large white onion that i chopped up um i just did kind of a, a rough dice on it not not too uniform just because i mean it doesn't really matter it's all going to cook fairly evenly anyway because it's going to go in the oven we're going to hit our oven on. We're going to do that up at 350 degrees to get that preheated. All right. So we'll do that. Um, I minced the garlic, but I did not do it by knife. I used a garlic press for it. So you do have to kind of go back and break it up and all that stuff, which, you know, again, no big deal. Make sure that's nice and spread around. Um, I did half of that jumbo <laughs> white onion, and yes, <laughs> hitting you, isn't it? Woo! Getting you good? Yeah. All right. Um, I've also got two large heirloom tomatoes here. We're just going to roast that up with it. Um, let me get that a better slice on that one. Move that over there. Get that off my cutting board. Uh, and that one. You want to try to keep all of your slices as even as possible. That way you get a good even cook on them. By the way, guys, if you guys are trying to do anything like this, absolutely make sure that you have a, a real cutting knife that is very, very sharp. Um, I'm not a chef. Yeah, but I know better. Don't use a dull regular kitchen knife. Like Use an actual like cutting knife. It's called a chef's knife. There you go. That works too. Proper term for that is going to be chef's knife. Um, if you're going to be a home chef, one, I greatly, 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 
greatly say that you should. Like, I am a big advocate of that. Um, definitely cook at home more. Um, sticky garlic. Sorry, guys. Sink not wanting to turn off properly. Um, but I'm a big advocate of the, the home chef thing, the home cook thing. Uh, I definitely think that everybody should cook at home. It saves you money. Say, you know, you, you get to spend great time. Um, you can even ask my kiddo over here. There's a lot of times where we... Say hi to the people, Z. Or hide away. Or that. He's shy. And this is the kid who wants to be a Twitch streamer. Anyway, um, this is this is a lot of great fun to do with your kids. Um, it's really, really fun. You can get them involved. You can teach them how to cook. Um, and just let them know that, you know, this is, this is the way we're meant to do things. We're not meant to go to fast food all the time. We're not meant to go out to eat all the time and all this stuff. It's just a lot of money. Um, yeah, you get to have some fun times, but it's just, I mean, in my opinion, it's just a waste of money. I mean, guys, you're talking about a 25 to 30% markup in any normal restaurant. You go to places that like, like the, the bowling alleys and stuff like that, that have like decent food and stuff. You're talking anywhere from a 33% markup to a 38% markup on your food, minimum. Um, everything that I have here today, some apples, tomatoes, carrots, uh, the spices, the herbs, the pork chops, all this stuff literally cost me like 30 bucks. And this is enough food to feed a small army. So if you're one for a couple days, yeah, or for a you couple can eat days, off this a I couple mean, days, yeah. I mean, yeah, and this stuff, it, once this I is I mean, all look how much up, is in this pan. I mean, it's a, it's a veggies. small pan, but I mean, there's that still is, a lot. That is your standard half size sheet pan. That is a standard half size sheet pan. And we've got so much on there. Um, this is a great way to feed yourself for a long time. Or if you're a parent who has lots of kids, you have two, three, four, five, six kids. You can't kids. do McDonald's. You can't do that crap all Six the time. kids a piece. No, you really can't. Because that's $40, $50 easy it, right exactly. there. Exactly. And that's um, one night. Yeah, and that's just in one night. <laughs> and that's it. The, you know, forty, fifty dollars. That's only if you're feeding half of them. Right. <laughs> that's not even if you're feeding all of them, because we all know kids get hungry. They want snacks, things right, like that. Right. Um. Just cook at home. I know it takes time. I know it's a pain in the butt. I know you get home from work and you're tired and you don't want to do it, but do it. It you know get the kids involved. Have them help. It's fun. It's fun for you. It's fun for them. They'll have loads of fun and a good way to bond. Exactly. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. It's bonding. You know, never spend money. Always spend time. Uh, what I'm trying to find, if I still have some, so I've got some cooking sherry up here. We're gonna we're gonna put some cooking sherry in with this. Um, so as far as for the people at home, how much would you say putting on there for the ones that don't know what, what you're doing here? Uh, I'm probably only gonna use maybe a quarter to a half a cup. It's really not a lot. You're just one. So best thing to do if you don't want to measure it out. Is you've got your hole here, just take your thumb, place it over so you get a nice little gap there. All right, come around onto that side. Just get yourself a little gap there and just start kind of like you would soy sauce, just kind of spreading it across. All right. And what is this for? This is just for flavor. This is all this is for. Is it's going to add a little bit of flavor, um, just a little extra, a little extra zing on there. Um, think of it as, you know, like. You, you know, you're, you're basically cooking with wine. Cooking sherry is just a low-grade wine. Um, I will say, if you're going to cook with actual wine, the key behind that is, and I'm going to tell you right now, and that's with any kind of alcohol or anything like that that you're going to cook with, if you yourself wouldn't drink it, just out of the bottle, like, this is really good, I enjoy this, do not cook with it. Because if, you, if you're not going to drink it, if you wouldn't drink it and you try to cook with it, you're going to hate the taste, you're going to hate the flavor. I can almost guarantee that every time. If you're not a box wine drinker, do not go out and buy box wine to cook with. If you're gonna go that route, head yourself on down the aisle and get cooking wine. Sauterne wine, cooking wine, anything like that, all right? Go that route first. Uh, Cause there's some really good cooking wines out there. 
So if you look in here, I have a gas fired oven. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our sheet pan and we're going to slide it in on the top rack. Make sure your top rack is one notch below the top, the, the highest part. All right. You don't want to get it dead to rights up real high. You want to get a good, even airflow in there. So we're going to place that on the top rack. And we're going to set that in there. Um, I don't necessarily cook with times. I go by sight, by when I know it's done. Um, you'll know it's done. Onions will be tender. Potatoes will be tender. You should be able to slide a fork in and right back out. No problem in the potatoes. Um, that's why we quarter them though, because they'll cook evenly that way. Uh, your tomatoes are going to be a little bit shriveled. They're going to release all their juices. If you don't want all that juice, I personally, I like all the juice. Um, if you don't want all that juice, just cut the, cut the seeds out, cut the middle pit seed out. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get this. I, um, I'm, I'm not feeling all that great today. So I just went and got a bag of gravy, which is freaking terrible. I know. Um, but we're going to make it our own. Got to pull a pot out here. All right. So. What we have here, we have our gravy in the pot, and then we have a pot here of water, because all of this is going to be served up with noodles. All right, just some simple, simple bow tie noodles, nothing fancy. Um, here a little bit later on down the road, I will actually do a video showing you how to make your own fresh pasta at home as well, and we'll go step by step through that, and I'll teach you all the little eccentricities and things like that to go into it. All right. Um, <clears throat> with the gravy, I've got some revolver blood and honey. We're going to add this in there with it. Now that's to, again, to add flavor to it. Cause you want flavor for all, for everybody out there. Who's like, well, my kids can't have that. Cause it, you're going to cook all the alcohol off. Okay. This is going to get hot enough that all that alcohol that's in there is going to go away. You're going to be left behind with the flavor. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to add come over here to the handy dandy so this is a one and a half cup measuring cup we're gonna crack that bad boy open we're gonna add one and a half cups of beer now if you don't like this beer guess what that's fine remember what I said if you're not gonna drink it don't cook with it all right but you can substitute any beer that you want. Um, with this being a gravy though, keep in mind you want to keep a little bit of a darker beer. Darker beers have less sugar in them, so there's less caramelization going on. You don't want it to caramelize too much because you are going to be reducing this. Okay, you're going to want to stir it with a whisk. So we're just going to stir all that yummy tasty goodness up. Um, <clears throat> you're going to be reducing this, which is going to intensify the flavors. With that being said, you don't want to reduce too much. We're probably going to reduce back down to a somewhat thick consistency. Um, again, we'll get it back to a gravy. <clears throat> if you realize that you're reducing a lot and it's not getting to the thickness that you desire, you can add in little bit of cornstarch with water you'll go ahead and mix that up into a slurry is what that's called um, equal parts so if you're going to use one cup of cornstarch you're going to do one cup of water okay just to kind of keep that in mind that's a nice even you know like one teaspoon one teaspoon it's a one-to-one -one ratio um, if you don't have cornstarch there's one thing that I can almost guarantee is probably in your kitchen right now which wow. is going to be flour and butter now, a lot of people will say, oh, just throw some flour in there. Add the butter to it. Again, you're going to do a one-to-one -one ratio, okay? Um, the reason why you want that butter in there is because that butter allows you to cook it a little bit longer and to cook out all that flour taste. It'll allow it to thicken, but it also, add, again, adds flavor. Guys, keep in mind, fat is flavor, okay? I know there are people out there who are like, I'm on a no-fat diet, or I'm on a low-calorie diet, or all this crap. But guess what? You need calories, okay? And being on a low-calorie diet is silly 
unless you're living an absolute 100% sedentary lifestyle. If all you're doing is sitting around all day, then yeah, you, you need a low calorie diet to stay in shape or to stay fit. Now granted, I'm not one to talk too much. I'm a bigger dude, but you know, never trust a skinny chef. Um, I resent that. <laughs> the key, the key to cooking stuff like this is B T B R T S. Now what that stands for is bring to boil, reduce to simmer. So you're going to bring it up to a boil. And as soon as you hit that boil, you're going to drop your heat down and throw that on a simmer. You want that on a nice low and slow simmer. Guys, developing flavor, developing things like this, it's called low and slow for a reason, okay? You don't want to rush through it, because if you rush through it, you're going to scorch it, you're going to burn it, you can do a lot of things to it that you don't want to do to it. So you're going to want to keep in mind to keep it low and slow. These are things, you know, the first part of this, we got through all that in 10 minutes time, and there was a lot of me explaining stuff. You know, if you get your mise en place, which means everything in its place, if you get that all ready, you can literally start throwing this stuff together real quick. The key behind it is your prep. Do your prep work, guys. Prep, prep, prep. Make sure you've got everything ready to go before you start going. You don't want to be halfway through and go, oh crap, I needed that and I forgot to cut it up or something. Now you got to stop and cut. Because you might end up going, oh crap, I've just burnt something that I was making. What do I do now? Well, there's really only one thing you can do. Start over. Um, again, if you're learning how to cook, if you're learning how to do this stuff, and you mess up and you have to start over, so what? Start over. It, uh, that's the joy of, of doing this stuff. All right? You're going to mess up, start over. You know, to quote, to quote Bob Ross, we don't make mistakes, we make happy little accidents. Some of the greatest foods in the world happened because someone went, oh crap! Oh, damn. <laughs> um, so yeah, another thing, when doing your pastas, okay, before you even get your water going, we're gonna, and we're gonna throw this bad boy on the back burner. Here. We're gonna work him on the back burner. Before getting your stuff going, okay, you're gonna wanna do about a tablespoon, so actually, about there, a tablespoon of salt, Put that right in the water. Always salt your water. And then I have here just some simple veg oil, just vegetable oil, okay? With this, it's kind of a great measuring. You got your little cap here. I'm gonna do two capfuls. I know what that's for. What's that for? Keep the water from boiling over when you dump the pasta in it. Wrong. Really? Wrong. I use it to keep my water from boiling over. Your water, to keep your water from, okay, one, you don't ever want to do too much water, okay? Pasta is going to expand by 300%. You're going to get a 300% yield out of it. Unlike most things where you get like less than 100. Pasta, rice, you'll get a 300% yield. The vet, the oil is actually because pasta is very starchy. You got to think flour, egg, water, okay? That's what makes pasta. All right, guys, it's very, very, very starchy. That oil goes in there to help it from sticking to each other too bad. All right? So. I oh, see. I've always done it for the. No, no, no. For the so boil over. If you, have a, if you have a problem with stuff boiling over a lot, okay, simply go to your local grocery store, Walmart, Kroger, Tom Thumb, H-E-B, whatever it may be. Buy a wooden spoon. Simple wooden spoon. Take that spoon. Lay it right across the top. That's gonna keep you from boiling over. The reason why those bubbles are gonna come up, they're gonna hit that spoon, they're gonna break apart. No more boil over, okay? A lot of your boil over is from the bubbles, okay? If you notice that you're still boiling over at that point, you got your heat too high, all right? The only time you really need your heat super high is when you're doing like sauteing, searing, searing off steaks, things like that. That's really the only time when you need super high heat, all right? Because when, you're, when your meat, when your protein hits that pan, you wanna hear that All right, you want it to make love to you, all right? You want that, you want that sound, you want that, that noise and that ambiance. Because behind that, 
that is how you know you're 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 sealing off the pour super fast, and you're not gonna you're gonna keep it juicy. All right, your 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 stuff's not just gonna leak out all over the place. Um, whilst this stuff is going. All right, guys. So y'all didn't get a chance to see it because we had to stop because I had to clean a dish. But this started boiling real good, so I dropped it down to a simmer. Basically, if you'll come down here, Jay, for me. If you look at my pi at my light there, I've got basically a simple exaggerated pilot. We got a good simmer going on. It's still bubbling pretty good, but that's all right. Um, gas stoves are a lot easier to work with. I love gas. Electric, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to fiddle with it to make sure that you set it at, at a good simmer. All right. What we're gonna do is we're going to move on to the pork now. Okay. Your any meat that you do, you're going to want to let it sit and get to room temperature. You can just I mean you don't want it to be fridge cold. You still want it to be cold. Uh, keep your your temperature danger zones in mind. One uh, forty to one forty. That's your temperature danger zone. Anything that sets in that for four hours or more is going to start growing bacteria on it, okay? The moment it starts growing bacteria is when it starts becoming unsafe, all right? So keep that stuff in mind. We're gonna come over here. I got this big massive pan here that I've got. Um, this is just cause, as I've said before, I'm a chef, so I'm used to cooking in big things. Um, you can actually do more at a time on this. We're gonna kick that on. We're gonna put it on a little bit of a high heat, kind of a, a medium high heat. Okay, we're gonna let that warm up. Okay, you want this pan to be searing hot when you get ready to put your meat in. All right. In the meantime, y'all will look. Let me scooch past you just for a second here. I'll grab the flashlight so we can show the people. You look, see how our veggies are starting to starting to get nice and roasty. So that's what we want. We want them to roast up real good. We want them to be tender. Um, Roasting, especially with vegetables, is usually the best way to go. You're going to keep all your nutrients in it. You'll get all that healthy, yummy, good stuff in there. You don't lose a lot of stuff. When you start boiling stuff and blanching and things like that, which these are all terms we will go over eventually. When you start doing that, you start losing nutrients into the water. It starts leaching away. So that's coming up to heat. We're going to go ahead and get our pot of water, which I have moved to the back burner. We're going to get that one going. We'll start that out on a medium high heat and let that go. Um, as you can see, I got to keep fiddling with the gravy here and let it keep it at a decent simmer. Um, you want bubbles going because bubbles means it's reducing. You don't want it to be a rolling boil. You want it to be a good simmer. All right. I think our pan's finally starting to get there. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here gonna grab some butter just a good old big old fat pad of butter move that crap out the way big old fat pad of butter like i said i cook with a lot of butter which is roughly about two teaspoons um yeah uh, a pad of butter is or about tablespoon, a tablespoon a pad of butter is about a tablespoon you want basically two pads of butter which is essentially two tablespoons yeah. gonna grease up our pan here all right let that set we're going to grab our rosemary and our thyme now here's the cool thing about these herbs these herbs are delicious you can grow them in your backyard um, rosemary especially around christmas time again you can go to places like walmart home depot things like that you can get a rosemary bush you can grow it in your backyard just a little point on that though if you do that which is great Keep it in a pot. Rosemary grows to expand to its surroundings. It will grow like wildfire. All right. This stuff will quickly take over your backyard if you let it. All right. Gonna throw some rosemary in there. Gonna throw a few sprigs of thyme. Let those just set in that butter and just, just eat it all up. Um, what that's going to do is that's going to express some of the oils from it, bring some of that flavor out really, really good. Um, if y'all, if y'all ever do, which if y'all are watching this, chances are you have watched it. 
Um, if you watch what Gordon Ramsay does, he does the same thing. He'll just throw the whole sprig in there. Because why not, right? So if you hear those herbs popping, now is the best time. Literally, you're just going to take your pork chops and just lay them in there. Lay them over top. Get them in there nice and lined up. All right. Luckily with these, I didn't have to trim them at all. They, uh, they're, they're pretty well trimmed, pretty good marbling, pretty good fat. Just, just cram them in there, man. Just fit them in there, all right? There's no, no wrong way to place them in the pan, all right? Throw them in there like that. Gonna come over here. I'm gonna grab some of my salt. With your salt, with your pepper, stuff like that. Pour it in your hand first and then pinch it and put it in that way, all right? Don't just go start dumping stuff on there, all right? That's how you come up with, ooh, this too salty. Um, this is some really good, really good pepper. It says world's best ground pepper. Um, I like it. It's got the little star hole on top, so we're just gonna go ahead and lightly sprinkle. Lightly sprinkle, okay? You don't want too much in there. You don't want not enough in there either. We're just going to let that roll roll on. I'm going to come over here, grab our tongs. Um, I have locking tongs. They like to, to lock up on me. Give that a good little stir. The reason why you want to keep a consistent stir on this, you don't want it to burn to the bottom of your pan. All right. Turn that up a little bit more. So with these, when cooking your pork chops, um, there is a time on them when you're cooking them. Uh, it's usually about one to two minutes per side. Um, again, I don't really go by time a lot. I go by sight. Eat every, everything is always different. Everything's going to be different, okay? So what you want to do is you want to look at your edges. You want to watch your edges here, and you'll see white start to creep up the sides as they cook. Thank you. The kiddo, the, it's kiddo approved. He's like, yeah, this smells good. Come here. And that's my kiddo right there. That's the child. <laughs> Zach, come here. Come here, say hi to the world. Ah, uh, come on. You know they're going to be asking for you. They're going to be like, where's this infamous kiddo? Come here. This is the kiddo. He, he, he came in here earlier and was like, it smells good. He's, he's shy. Very much so. Very much so. Um, as your pork chops cook as well, they'll kind of roll a little. You'll see how right here it's starting to roll up. That's normal. Don't worry about that. It's kind of supposed to do that. It's getting a chef belly. Yes. <laughs> a bunch of. All right. And then, so anytime you go to pour something in, cover it so that you can control it. All right. I'm just going to. Pour that in there. Get all that good, yummy flavor in there. All that good, yummy, tasty goodness. Got that heat up a little bit more. And it just kind of cooks from there. So give us just a little bit, we'll get it cooked up, and then we'll show you what it looks like afterwards, all right? And we're back. So, as you can see, we've gone ahead and flipped our pork chops over. You can see some, some browning on the edges here. That's what you're looking for, okay? You want browning. You don't want it to be a lot of brown, but you want a little bit of that brown. But basically what that is, so everything has sugar in it. I don't care what you say, everything has natural sugars. That browning that you see are those natural sugars in there caramelizing, all right? And that's what you want. You want a little bit of caramelization. Um, again, like you want to you wanna taste the meat, not the heat, all right? Even if you're cooking with charcoal, you want to taste the meat, not the heat. All right. So we got all this going. Looks like our um, our gravy is probably in the industry what we would call nappe by now, which nappe just basically means the back of this spoon. We're going to coat that, and it's going to stick to it. So all you have to do is drag it through. Nice and nappe. Doesn't slough off. Doesn't slide off. Nice and coated. We'll give that a little try. And I'd say that's pretty dang good. So we'll throw that down on super low heat. 
Again, exaggerated pilot light going on down under there. Just enough to keep the heat going, keep it nice and warm. Um, that'll help. And we've got our, our pot over here going. Big pot, hadn't boiled yet. All right, not that big of a deal. Um, one of the most common mistakes that are made with people when they are making pasta from dehydrated pasta, basically, is they will throw their water on, throw their oil in, put their salt in, whatever, turn it on, and then dump all their pasta in and wait. Bad. Bring it to a boil first. Get your water rolling first. Then dump your pasta in. And then cook it to al dente. Al dente is where you've got a little bit of chew. It's nice and firm. Doesn't feel like mush in your mouth. But it's also cooked. You don't want crunch. You want chew. Alright? This stuff is going real good. Oh, God, that sounds so good. I wonder how it smells. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Get in there and give that a sniff. Oh, God. It smells good, don't it? I know. Y'all are sitting home like, really? I can't smell this crap. <laughs> um, again, we poured some of the beer in there. I'm going to go ahead and hit it with just a little bit more now. Again, remember to keep your thumb over it. All right. I literally just bought this beer to cook with. Just to cook with it. That's why it's there. I haven't even drank it. Because um, I'm weird. But yeah. We'll just we'll just keep this stuff going. Get it all nice and cooked up. Let's let's check on our vegetables while we're at it. What do you say? Oh yeah, those are starting to look real nice. So, uh, Jay, would you hand me a fork out of that drawer real quick? Of course I will. So I can show these people what we're talking about. So you'll come over here to your potatoes and you'll just go in and see how it picked up. Not done yet. All right. Which is perfectly fine, but you can see these tomatoes are starting to roast off real good. Your carrots are starting to curl up. Man. Oh, yeah. Oh, you smell that? Do you smell that, Jay? I do. It smell good, don't it? it? Smells like I know what I'm doing, huh? A little bit. Only a little bit. Just a little bit. So, uh, the key is also, with roasted potatoes, they're going to have a crunch to them, all right? Because you're roasting them, you're not boiling them. You still want crunch. Again, this is keeping in all of your flavor. Everything compounding and building, all right? Um, for the pork chops over here, you got to make sure you don't make, you make pork chops, not pork chips, all right? So, see that side's nice and brown? So what we'll do is we'll give them all one more good turn. We'll just let those cook up, firm up real nice, if I can get this one to turn. And you can see all those herbs that were down in there. They're cooking up real good in there as well. The cool thing is, is they're cooked. You can actually eat those. So you can actually pull those out and you can place those on as an edible garnish. Uh, one thing that my chef preached to me all the time is edible garnish. Always edible garnish. If, if it's not meant to be eaten, don't put it on the plate. All right. Uh, there's a lot of restaurants nowadays that'll they'll throw crazy crap on there and stuff like that. You know... They'll, they'll throw a, a lemon wedge on there. And you're looking at it like, cool, I got a lemon wedge. Put it I in can, my water? I, I, I can eat that, but I can't eat the rind. So you have to do what's called supreming it. It's just peeling the rind off, putting the wedge on there. All right? Edible garnish. Plus, lemons lose their sourness once you've cooked them. Um, yeah, other than that, we just, I mean, I don't think I have to walk y'all through how to cook pasta and show y'all how to cook pasta. So, uh, as soon as we get everything cooked up and plated up, we'll bring it back and we'll, we'll let y'all see what it looks like. All right. <clears throat> All right. So we're back. Pasta's done. Veggies are out. Pork chops are, are done. We got them on a plate. Um, I did throw the pork chops in the oven just a little bit to, to kind of finish them off. Um, whew.
that's done. So here's the thing with pasta. Most people, when they go to dump it, they dump it all out as per usual and then start washing it off. If you do that, you're silly. Don't ever wash your pasta. Once you wash your pasta, you wash all that starch off of there. Okay, that starch is what you need. That allows whatever sauce you're using to stick to the pasta. Okay, you want it to coat. You'll actually end up using a lot less sauce that way, okay? You don't want to drown your pasta in sauce. You want to be able to taste the pasta and the sauce and the veggies and all that stuff. Okay? Oh, good Lord. Excuse me. Uh, Y'all are probably used to that by now. So, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our tongs, okay? going to grab our plate, all right? Typical chef, freaking white plates, all right? Grab a little bit of pasta, get that on there, just enough to cover the bottom of the plate, all right? Then we will grab two pork chops, like so, put that on there. Come over here, get us some veggies. I want some tomatoes. Mmm. Roasted tomatoes. I don't know about y'all, but I, I'm, I'm the kind of bastard. I'll just bite into it with some salt. All right, and then grab a spoon. Get some of our pan gravy over here. If you look at that, oh, just drizzle that on there. Just a little bit. You don't want too much. All right. And one thing that y'all have probably noticed, if you've ever eaten at a place with white plates and all that you're like wow a lot of food on here and every time I see someone do stuff they always drip stuff on the plate how's it come out clean just like that <laughs> uh, trick of the trade behind that is a lot of times when you go to wipe your plate whatever you use will leave like little like grime and stuff behind you know what I'm talking about Jay I do I do you wanna know how to keep from do it from that happening microfiber towel I'm just talking trash. Paper towel, vinegar. Huh. Vinegar eats all that grime away. Huh. So, give me that camera. Because you already know. Fork so for now you, I get sir. To come from behind the camera. Knife for you. Tell me what you think about that. Be, I'm going to be like Gordon Ramsay. Oh, bloody hell, mate. Bloody hell. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, piece of bread. Good piece of toast. We'll just throw that on the side there. Get my Gordon Ramsay on when it comes up here. So real quick, just to kind of get in there and let y'all see it. Let me get my big fat butt out the way. That's basically what we end up with. I got my face buried in the veggies over here. Okay. Trust me, it's good. I just want to make sure I ain't going to die. Man, I ain't going to kill you today. Not today. Mm, listen to that crunch of that bread. Gravy, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is that as I would, as I'm quoting you? Tell me if I'm quoting this wrong. Is that what you would call them ho smack? Yeah, it's smacking. <laughs> it's a little too elegant for me, though. You know, I'm a, I'm a chillings and grits kind of guy. <laughs> All right, man. No, but it's actually really, really good. Though. Take that back. Get that back on me. Now, as y'all probably already know, we family around here anyway, so. Oh, yeah. Keep on roping, baby. Mmm. Mm. Yep. 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 We got him. We got him.
Mm-hmm. Mm. Man. Zach, you wanna give this a try? You gotta do it on camera though. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for joining me. Mm. As I swallow down this food. Let me start that over. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, this time, Phoenix truly did it. Um, keep in mind, guys, this was all done in under 90 minutes. All right, y'all can make this at home. Make this for yourselves. More videos like this to come. Um, I really want people to get back in their kitchen. Stay the hell out of my restaurants. I'm tired of being busy all the time. No, I'm kidding. I love it when y'all come in. Um, these are great, great little little things that you can make and you know if you're a meal prepper you got food for a week um, if you are a mother or a father who's got kids or you're a husband and a wife or whatever you know this is great date night food this is just great food all around all right um, keep it fresh keep it healthy keep it simple stupid all right love you guys y'all have a good one